Hi guys, this is Tobias Deal 3 MHT with a follow up to my maybe slightly boring one hour end fed half wave live stream. So I decided to try YouTube shorts video this time. I have uh, collected uh, quite a number of uh, SWR plots with uh, the nano VNA over the last three years with different winding types, different compensation capacitors. Also, I tried a FT114-52 core at some point and I just uh, thought I'll share the result with you without comments so that you can pause the video and have a look and make up your own mind. So let's jump right into it. All plots were recorded with my shortened NFET half wave for the 80 meter band. So the variant with the 110 microhenry coil. The first couple of plots was made with this transformer, which has two additional taps. Um, in addition to the tap at winding number 16. So I also tapped 15 and 14 in order to quickly compare um, what difference does it make. Of course, it's not ideal and building three transformers would have been better, but there you go. On the primary side, the usual 100 picofarad capacitor, um, two primary windings and um, the ground of primary and secondary were shorted together for these tests. As you can see here, I had an option to keep it open in order to test with a separate counterpoise. So the first three plots are a bit older, um, two or three years ago when I built the antenna and I cut it in place. And as you can see, it's very easy to hit your amateur radio bands when you're out with the nano VNA and measure and then can exactly decide, oh, one centimeter less. Um, and I, uh, you know, bring my resonance point where I want it to be. Uh, let me shut up for a moment and zoom in to the five different bands um, those that, uh, that you can see in detail how the SWR curves look like. Okay, and in comparison to that, I have three plots that I've recorded a few days ago. And this is how my antenna is mounted at the moment. Basically, it is uh, not sloping as badly as before. Um, I used a spider pole to get uh, the other end of the antenna a bit higher into the tree. And this is the difference that just changing the mounting position made. Nothing else was changed. Still the same antenna, still the same transformer. Um, again, let me uh, zoom in and let, uh, so that we can look at the detailed plots. The next traces show an experiment where I stacked to FT114-43 and again um, built two to 14, 15, 16 windings. The first three plots are without a uh, 100 picofarad compensation capacitor and the other three plots are with the compensation capacitor. Okay, looks, looks probably right a mess. So again, let's uh, zoom in and look at the five different bands.
And the last set of traces is with three stacked FT114-52 cores and three to 23 windings. And I've experimented with uh, different values for the compensation capacitor. So this is um, uncompensated without capacitor. Then the pink one is adding 47 picofarad. The red one is adding 75 picofarad. The yellow one is adding 100 picofarad. The green one 147 and the black one 200 picofarad. Again, let me zoom in over the five different bands so that we can see it in detail. So what's the conclusion about all these experiments? Um, well, the conclusion for me is that I have <laughs> absolutely no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I just, you know, uh, browse the internet and if I find a halfway plausible um, posting about NFET half-wave antennas, I, I read it and if it's not too much snake oil or ham lore, and it is an interesting build, then I give it a try and just see does it work for me. I think it is very difficult to build an efficient and broadband and fat half-wave transformer. You have to really have a very good understanding of HF and complex permeability, like the primary inductance of your transformer, the secondary windings and the interwinding capacity. Um, your ferrite material uh, when it saturates and uh, how much power uh, you can uh, use uh, your transformer for, uh, which compensation capacitors to use, etc. etc. So it's not straightforward, easy, like you know, R equals uh, U divided by I. Uh, you <laughs> really need to know what you're doing. So I keep my eyes open. Uh, always uh, check out Owen Duffy's uh, homepage and uh, maybe also have a look at MM0 OPX YouTube channel. He recently experimented also quite a lot with uh, different uh, winding types and he settled with one of the chunkier ferrite cores um, and I think he came up with a very nice design for efficient QRP transformer and I try to get my hands on one of those. So the summary is uh, the journey continues and maybe you want to put it in the comment what is your favorite uh, ferrite material or ferrite core or winding type and what worked for you. Uh, I'd like to hear about that. So thanks for watching and uh, until next time. Bye.